Broadcasting from Ireland, featuring interviews with some of the biggest names in magic, welcome to the Deceive Reality Podcast with your hosts, David Peace and Steve Spade. And we're back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Deceive Reality Podcast. Thanks so much for being here. And Steve is here with me. Steve, how are you doing? Hey, guys. How are you? I'm in my car. I didn't get home yet. <laughs> <laughs> Super professional, as always. And Always. <laughs> We're joined by a very special guest here, Adrian Vega. Adrian, how are you doing? Hello, how are you? Very good. So happy to be here. So yes, yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. No <laughs> Absolutely, problem. man. Thanks so much for coming. So we always like to start the podcast with asking how our guests got into this weird and wonderful world of magic. So how did your love of magic really begin? Yes, I tell you, maybe it's not a very original history because a lot of magicians, I think we start in the same way. But in my case was when I was almost a kid, no? around eight, nine years old, no? I, I saw a magician and, and I thought that they, were, they had superpowers, you know, superpowers. Like, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. he, he, he was born with superpowers and I am so sad because I will never learn, <laughs> I can't do that because I don't have powers. I, have, I was living here for eight years and if I do that, <laughs> nothing happened, no? So I wanted, I wanted to have that powers, and I, I learned that in that you can learn this passion, no? You can study that. So with, when I was nine years old, more or less, I discovered one very small shop in Madrid, in Spain, because maybe as you know, uh, for my perfect English, you can you can feel that I am not, I am from Spain, right? It's better than our Spanish, so. Yeah, That's a fact. I am not sure. I am not sure. We will see. <laughs> but in my case, I discovered that very small shop, and that shop showed me that Juan Tamarit, you know, the, the master, mm-hmm. the Juan Tamarit, no, the master, he had a, a school, a magic school in, in Madrid. So I was there with almost... 11 years old, 11, 12 years old, and I and I started learning all this passion, all our love uh, with with this master. No, so for me, I think it, this was the best gift that I could get in, in even in that moment. No, because I was very young, but doesn't matter because in that moment I was in the same uh, class, no? in the same class with people from uh, 20 years old, 30 years old. So doesn't matter. No, you know, in this when you are inside of this magic world. That's a matter of the age, no? It's the, mm. the common is the passion. So I start learning that and I learned, for me, the most important thing in magic, no, that I learned when I was a, almost a kid, that is how to respect our art and how to love, no? Because one of the most important thing in magic is the, maybe the life, no? It's love. And if you listen to Juan Tamarit, no, you can see that and you can feel the love that we have for this passion, no? So, so yes, I was so happy and so lucky to to start in this world uh, with this master, no? So that was it's my beginning. So good. <laughs> yeah, it's such a great way of, of of starting your your career in it. You know that 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 passion and that drive to to kind of be creative and and not just you know do you know kind of kind of like what other magicians might just buy a trick and learn it. I know uh, like one time Rez goes right into the, the the reasons why you're performing this trick. You have to have a reason. Exactly, you know, that, that was the, the point, no? because even I, I remember when I was uh, in the same class with all people say, oh, uh, he likes magic, he wants to be a magician, but wait, because when he discovered that he has to read a lot, and he has to mm. practice a lot, and he will stop, no? And say, no, no, uh, <laughs> this is what I thought. So I will read a lot, I will practice a lot, and I, because I understood in the first moment that we needed that, no? And we need to, to, to really work with passion and, and this is what changed no? everything. And I think, I think this is the difference no? between maybe now that could be easier to learn some tricks, maybe in YouTube yeah. or in different platform, right? Mm. But I think it, now it's more difficult to, to get a, a really master as, as Tamarit, no? in my case, that can share with you the passion and you can really understand what magic means no? more than just tricks or just a couple of psychology tips. No, no, it's, I think it's more, a lot of more than that, no? Absolutely. I remember seeing uh, one Tamriz when he was lecturing in Dublin and it was like one o'clock in the morning, everybody even asked him to perform. He's like, no, no, no. And then like one o'clock in the morning, he starts performing and just kills 
every magician who was watching yeah, was yeah. just like oh, and it, the energy that he puts into the performance it really makes you think I couldn't imagine seeing that like right away because I was thought I knew a lot of magic and then I saw one time a and was like okay I have to like yeah. go back and this is something different no even here yeah. in Spain because he's uh, he's very well known no he he appears on TV oh I mean in mm -hmm. here because many in the magic world he's well known in the world no but here in Spain mm -hmm. he was on TV for a lot of years and and some people say oh he was very funny and he was a good magician but even they don't know how big is Tamarit no because behind of all of that we have a lot of theory a lot of things a lot of a lot of stuff that is only because he's passion no? and, mm, and this is yeah. what i learned no? and, and this passion and and how to respect no? the the art of magic no so and it's great to pass that on then when you're teaching younger uh, students and things like that it's great to pass on pass on that passion because at least they're in it for the right reasons then you know it's not like a, a lot of magicians kind of get that ego thing and all this kind of stuff yeah. but if you keep it about the passion and about the actual art it's going to be better for the art as, as a whole and magic, exactly. I guess, as well. Yeah, for that reason, doesn't matter the ego, no? I think magic is, oh, of course, when we are performing, I think it's the most important is your persona, no? You, you're as, yeah. If you are interested, sure. your magic will be interesting, no? Of course. But in the in, but we are doing magic, so we have to respect that. And I am, I don't care the ego, the ego no? It's first because I am doing this yeah. all, only because I love doing this, no? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, I, I only, I always want to, to do my best and uh, everything, no, of course. But the, I, the thing that I try never forgot, never forget is that, no, is I started doing this not for money, not for club, is because I really love what I do and I really have fun doing with uh, what I do, no. So for that reason, sometimes maybe we can talk later about competition or other things like that. That in that moment it's like a, I don't feel nervous. I, I feel nervous, but yeah. the same nervous that I feel when I am doing any show, because mm -hmm. the, for me I am I am doing this. I am in a competition, not because the awards, not because, of course as well, but I am doing that because I really love what I do and I really have fun. So I am having fun in in a magic show, normal magic show, in a competition, in a show for magician because that's matter no the main thing is this is magic and this is just how i how i play no i don't know if i eat <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no, no yeah, definitely but, makes yeah. a lot of sense yeah absolutely yeah man yeah. I, I was in you know that the pandemic so i am doing i am in spain for almost two years so my english is even worse now <laughs> so, sorry it's, for pretty, that. it's pretty good it's, it's pretty uh, good it's pretty good we understand exactly what you mean and 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 exactly like you said you know the the, the passion and that the and the kind of the love that you have for it. It, it, it does speak in your work as well. You can you could tell that you, you know that you would have trained with people like one time residents over that in your own work. So that's that's a compliment for sure, you know. <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> when, when you were in that sort of school learning, how long did it take you to get mnemonica down? Was that like that's a challenge? <laughs> so if I am honest, I, I I I told you I have a very bad memory. <laughs> that was my problem. But no, no, I tried. I remember trying to learn maybe with thirteen years old, not like a one year after. Yeah. Maybe I tried to learn without understand everything around mnemonica, no? Because it's a very big world. No, <laughs> the mnemonic stuff. But I, 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 I am honest. I learned it when I was maybe 13, 14. Uh, I forget it. I learned it again the years yeah. after. I forget yeah. it. And <laughs> so I, I tried learning it during the pandemic. And at the start of the pandemic, when we thought it would be a few weeks, I was like, perfect. I'm going to learn mnemonica. And I had it down. And then a year into the pandemic, I hadn't performed once, so I'd forgotten <laughs> the money. You got it all. <laughs> so then at, at, at Christmas, I learned it again, and I'd forgotten <laughs> half of it already. I, I still know some, but I'm like, yeah, oh, so I think what, I actually, Welcome to my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the Seven of Diamonds. No, like, oh, what's oh, the Seven three? of Diamonds? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like seven of Diamonds. <laughs> three, yeah. <laughs> because of course, and, and the most difficult part, no, that, of how that is, is performing, no? Because you have to yeah. be fresh, you have to be quick, you have to look like that you are not thinking anything, no? And because you can you can do yeah. some tricks just with the order, no? But the the special point of mnemonic of quantum array, so uh, they are a lot of tricks like mnemonicosis. I don't know, a lot of tricks, yeah. no? That you have to no, be right. very quick, fresh, and yes. look natural, no? So and even when I am practicing, always I like to shuffle. 
So that is so bad if you want to practice the mnemonic. I was oh, shit, I shuffle. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah, it's like a back, back to the drawing board, have to start over. Yeah, but, like I it, <laughs> <laughs> some of the stuff that you've created as well that like we've seen one of the things is arrested i think is a really cool Very routine cool. and the gimmick the gimmicks you get with it i think are just like they just look almost like works of art they're just so cool and it's like it's such a powerful routine i know steve being an escape artist it was like the second i saw it i sent him a link being like yeah i found the perfect routine for you for like oh, an really? escape card magic so like i know steve you've been performing it quite a bit recently yeah, yeah, I, I got some there recently and I've been performing great reactions, just just killer reactions. And it's so clever. You nearly want to show them this is how it works. It's it's very, very good. Um and yeah, the reactions have been great. And I, I, I'm playing a kind of a Houdini kind of um a kind of a premise around it and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, it's it's really working. <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. This is another one thing that I tell when I share the trick on my lecture of with Magician, because I say in my case, no, when always when I try to so I, I don't feel a lot creative magician. No, I think that sometimes I do interpretation, interpretation, or I yeah. I create something just because I need it in some moment in my career. No, because mm -hmm. I want to create something and I don't find the perfect solution, whatever. So I try. I try to the spectator. I say no, maybe it's not good. So I'm gonna change. So it's like a, like this. No, my 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 way of how to create. No. Yeah. Because I I don't create like a, oh today I want to create uh, three tricks one gimmick and say, no no in my case <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah because I, I learn uh, listening to my audience no because yeah. uh, and you know no I think I, I tell you a, a very quick uh, story because when I always and a lot of magicians no when we perform we used to feel no to shoot or to feel our yeah. show just to see the no, if we flash or try to improve our show. Mm -hmm. no? yeah. So one day I I discovered that also I can feel my audience. No, so one day I put the camera pointing to my audience. So I learned a lot about the real reactions that I saw when when I filmed that. No, because when you are performing, sometimes you say, oh maybe maybe they don't clap, so maybe they don't like it, and sometimes they don't clap because they are like, oh, and they clap. <laughs> yeah, no? yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> or sometimes they, they clap and you are performing and you say, oh, they are clapping, so I am good. And suddenly mm -hmm. when you see the real reaction, you see like <laughs> they are clapping <laughs> without an emotion, no? So in my case, when I see my audience and I do real interpretation of that emotion, of that expression, I learn a lot. And trust me, eh, if you want to learn sometimes from your audience, in my case, is what I, what I do. I learn a lot doing that. And for that reason, all the things that I do or I create, always I, 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 I am thinking in, in my audience. No? I don't think in yeah. the method. I think in the method, of course, later. But in mm -hmm. the first moment, I think on them. No? Because the, yeah. my magic is for them. It's not for another magician. It first, it's for them. After, I, I am so happy to share with the magic community and I am happy that they like it. No? But I don't create just for magicians. No? In my case, I create for... For my audience, no. Mm -hmm. So in that yeah. things, saying that, I mean, always I, or sometimes I have some tricks that you, you, it's so real, difficult because you have to do a lot of techniques, and it's okay because the effect is, I think, is great for me, for my style, and for my audience. And sometimes I don't do anything, and I, I don't do anything. I mean, with the method, no. It's the case yeah. of arresting. I mean, it's so easy because maybe doesn't fool up magician, but I don't care because this is a trick for the audience. And the I audience. Say, you know, that yep. you say the they reaction is so cool and it's just very easy technique, but doesn't matter because the effect is is the things that the spectators see, you no? Know? So it's a, and it's a great giveaway. It's a great little souvenir to for them. To, I mean, they've never seen anything like that. I mean, and when I when I saw it initially, I was like, "That's so brilliant." I mean, there's no effect like that, or even or anything that I could play around, like a, a handcuffs or escape or anything. Um, and it, it, and it's playful. It's one of those kind of tricks. It's got that kind of anniversary waltz kind of idea. I suppose you were probably yeah. thinking of like okay. that also, kind of idea. Yeah, being a, I'd say in the in the trailer, not the idea of making a car uh, looks like a handcuff. It's yes. from uh, Paul Harry's book. Uh, he he published the idea of doing a handcuff. But when yes. I read that, what the same? No, I read that. Oh, I like th that image 
the, I, so I want to make it this bigger for my audience, not, mm -hmm. not just a, a quick a double lift and that's it, no? I wanted to, to do something else. So for that reason, I start playing with different ideas. I put the idea of the holes. So I don't do anything, but you know, no? I, yes, I say yeah, much, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so I good. think it's very cool too and very powerful. And, and I came with that and then I share with the Magic community. What, what I, I love happy to like it. But the thing no, I love what? most about it as well is there's like, after the trick is done, there is like evidence of the magic. Yeah. Because there's still pieces of Joker there that right. match and it's just like it's the evidence of the color change is there perfectly for everyone to yeah. see and i think that's just such a beautiful moment of like that it's a lot of times when we ch do a color change or something it's gone the the magic's over you can't yeah tell it's the very story. real no? and you have yeah, the, it's all there the yeah. proof no? this is yeah. this is a very another cool idea no that uh, a theory about gabby pareras do you know gabby pareras Another no, magician no. from Spain, he passed away uh, last year, so very young. So, but he was a great theory uh, from Ascanio, no? you know, Arturo Ascanio. So, oh, yes. a, the a theory that is great. As he said, if you do a magic, magic art, magic trick, or whatever, if after you finish, if you see a table with proof or with confetti, with some things, and if you see that, oh, it's like a, a proof, like a, I really feel something in that moment no is uh, very true <laughs> i don't know if i explain well but like, the like something is... they have something tangible to 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 see the the magic it lasts longer kind of thing yeah i understand exactly, no? and when you see the the ending of the table you you can remember what you saw no the performer yeah. no so it's a very cool idea to be mem memorable memorable yeah memorable yeah I, I don't yeah me it. memorable yeah memorable, more oh, memorable. perfect yeah. english man yeah. perfect, perfect <laughs> english david <laughs> Thank you. He's been practicing. I, I practice. <laughs> people say Cork people from Ireland don't have the best Irish. Really? So we try. We try our best. Like, <laughs> <Sorry. you know? laughs> Take accents. But yeah, I think that thing of like when you're leaving a table and there's like a bent fork over here and there's like torn up cards over there and it's mm -hmm. like it. You make a mess. I think it's kind of like what you want the the yeah. final image to be of just chaos almost. It's that yeah. or you should have been there. Yeah, and depends on your style. You maybe it's not to it has to be a, a mess, no? You have to perfectly, yeah. but it's like a no, it's, yeah. It has to just to be. Uh, it's just a, a small theory, but a small tip that uh, that happens with arresting, no? So for that reason, yeah. I, yes. I remember that. No, when you finish, you can see the car and you can uh, remember the trick in that moment, no? Because maybe when you say a, uh, for example, no, if you do a, car, a restore car store and restore, mm -hmm. no? And you restore yeah. it with the signature, yeah. people can can imagine or can, can remember again. But if yes. you, for example, take another piece and you put together and you give it to them, just the image of the weird card will remember that moment, no? And when they turn yeah. to another friend or share that moment with another friend, it's very easy to imagine or even to see in, the, in his mind the trick, no? The actual effect. Exactly. Like even like a mismade card or something like that where they're exactly. left with the impossible object. Yeah. For example, no? So. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I, I think it's it's nicely even those moments of magic. And it's like one of the other ones, the, the your card stab or your deck stab is like, again, it's another thing. It's a moment. It leaves stuff. There's, there's a knife. There's cards getting torn. So it's like, it's again, it's a memory to have stuff. Has That's the card cool. stab something been something you've always been thinking about or? Is that like one of your go-tos from a young age that you really like that whole premise of the routine? So I didn't understand the question, but I will, I'm sorry, but I want to answer <laughs> okay. what I want. <laughs> yeah, go for it. No, no, yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I, you asking about how, how I get with that idea of how to, how do it, I it, use? Yeah, it, it just, uh, is, is that a, is the carrot stab something you've always loved and yeah. just played with a lot? Yeah, 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 a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of, even I think it's maybe, I don't know, but maybe 10 years that I was doing the, the deck stuff, and happens again, no, for the same reason that, uh, that I want something, I, I learn a classic, for example, in this case, maybe you, you, you all know the classic where the spectators sign a card, they put mm -hmm. in the deck, and you put the deck in a card box, mm -hmm. and now you put the card box inside to a paper bag, mm -hmm. no, maybe you, you know, no? you put yeah. it in a paper bag, yeah. and then you stop with the knife around the paper bag and you, when you destroy the, the paper bag, the signed card is on the knife, but the deck is perfect, 
uh, close in the car box, so everything is perfect and, and it's cool, no? And it was it's a yeah. great classic. But in my case, it was the same, no? I was doing this for years, and one day I say, what happened if maybe if I do this, the same trick, but without the paper bag, no? Because I really want to see what happened inside yeah. of that yes. bag <laughs> to have the, the signed card in the, uh, around the knife, no? So I started with different methods, in, and then I, I the, the easiest method sometimes is the best, so always with a lot of things around, no? Mm. But I was doing this, yes, for like maybe 10 years now, and, and I love for the same reason, because now, in my case, I understand and I can see the actual effect, no? I see that I really stop all the cars, and then I, now I understand, no? Because... I destroy all the cards except for one that is used. Mm -hmm. no? So now for me, makes a little more sense. But also, I have a very visual moment that with the knife, no, mm -hmm. it's very visual when you are you you go all the way through mm -hmm. the deck and and again, no, it's, I think it's more uh, a little bit more memorable, memorable <laughs> because yeah. you can see the image and it's easy to remember and. And whatever, but I I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to think that when you're coming up with an effect, or you're, or obviously you're trying to come up with something that you know the audience would like, that you want to physically show them. It, it kind of reminds me of like when Houdini was doing the straight jacket escape. He was he took it out from hiding it behind a box, or a lot of magicians at the time were doing different escapes and things, but they were all hidden inside in boxes. And then he started doing it like open, and then obviously did it hanging upside down to let the people see. You know what was really happening, and it's almost like taking out of the bag did that for the card trick. Exactly, and I love that uh, that idea. No, I and I think because sometimes they say no, we need to cover because the the mystery, no, because we have to put some mystery around, no. Mm -hmm. But and I like and I like it that idea too. But I think uh, if we are doing a show, we need more emotion, not that mystery, because because we have to cover. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> no? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, Santa is great. The mystery, no, it's the same like the color change. No, you can do a color change with some mystery, and you can use a flap, and it's super visual. So both mm -hmm. are great. No, just we have to think. And I think the emotion. card box. Sorry. Yeah, I was saying. I think that the card box kind of adds that mystery in as well because you have you put the deck into a card box. That's the mystery. And then putting the care box into a bag, it's like double mystery. And you're like, the box is exactly, enough. Exactly. You know, it's like, the, that's yeah. perfect. Like, you don't yeah, need to what, go what overboard. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, yes, it's, at, at least uh, we just, we know what we want, no? Or, or I think it's important to know what emotion we can, we want to share, no? Because mm -hmm. as I told you, you know, the flap, a, a color, a flap, no? To make a color yeah. change is super yeah. visual. And as Narse with covering with the hands is great as well. Just they are different, no? We have yeah. one has very visual moment, and the other one has a little mystery around, no? So just yeah. with once we know that we can decide what is the way that we can we can go, or we want to go, no? It's a great kind of final image too, though that the deck being destroyed because you know so many people. Even when you get a card signed, some people are a bit reluctant to sign it because they think you only have like one deck of cards because they have one deck of cards at home that no one ever damages, and you know. And then for you to damage the deck, it, it's very, it's very final. It's like I did this for you and you only kind of thing. It's it's a, it's a powerful image to leave an audience with. Yeah, and, and dramatic, no? As you say, mm -hmm. dramatic. Yeah. When you do a trick and you destroy just one card. Say, so, oh no, you are going to tear up the car. <laughs> no? yeah. So imagine if you destroy the 52. It's like, a, oh yes, I am rich. I am destroying <laughs> the deck for you. <laughs> you are yeah, special, no? But, but I think it's another good point, no? Like uh, making that, that moment special, no? And this is another thing I think is important for me, no? It, like uh, when we are performing, always I try to make it special first mm -hmm. for me because I don't want to get bored. In the future, yeah. no, and, but also for the spectator, no. If you feel that this this moment is just for you, is special and different than the other day, uh, you're gonna love more, no. If you feel yes. that I am performing because maybe I don't care and I am performing like a machine, you're gonna feel that, no. Yes. So it's another yeah, it, it, important point for me. Definitely no. Even though we've seen the tricks a million times, we have to act like we've only seen it for the very first time for every individual person. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. For me, it's important and it's difficult sometimes because maybe you are doing yeah. the same tricks ten years, 
But the thing that I think is maybe the trick is the same, but I am not the same than 10 years ago. No? Yes, now I'm yeah. older, I have more, more, more life, maybe good or worse, doesn't matter, but I, I, I have more experience. And also mm -hmm. the spectators, they are different too. So mm -hmm. yes or oh yes, the show will be different. So if I feel really this, I, I can share it, or I think I can share it, and people will feel it too. Yeah, great way of thinking about your magic, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Something you talked about earlier about like filming your magic and stuff, and it's like the most terrifying thing to do to watch yourself. But yes, do you like to watch for it? For that right reason, away? I film my audience. Sorry, for that <laughs> yeah. reason, I film my audience. No. <laughs> do, do you like to watch it right away, or do you like to wait a few days, a few weeks before watching a performance back yes. to kind of clear it out? A few, a few days, a few days after, because I want to. To enjoy that moment <laughs> because <laughs> sometimes no, some of the shows a lot of the show you finish and you finish happy because you end the show more or less not always more or less mm -hmm. always you finish happy because you are doing what you love and more or less the shows they are they are cool they are great people love it so you feel you finish the show really really happy no so that years ago i said oh i'm so happy that i think the the show was cool and then i saw the performance oh shit but now i flashed there or oh, i was <laughs> a little slow in that moment oh maybe i get a good idea and i didn't say i say oh shit it was a bad show <laughs> <laughs> so, so now i say no no i want to be re relative I don't know if relative mm. makes sense in English. Yeah. Like, yeah. The show was cool, so I think the people love it. I was happy, so good. So now, in a few uh, days later, now I want to improve a little bit. So now I just take notes. I saw my show, takes notes, and that's it, no? But without emotions. I mean, mm -hmm. emotion, like a, it was a good show, and now I am improving my show, yeah. and that's it, no? But I don't feel bad because I forgot one thing or I, no? Do you understand yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yes, definitely. yes, yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. I, I, I do the same with my wife because my wife is at a lot of my public shows and she, she gives me feedback afterwards and it used to be right after the show and it used to just like crush me. So I'd have to be like, <laughs> let's wait a couple of days because you're on a high and everything is like, you're full of adrenaline and you just want to live in that. Especially even sometimes when you, you think you've done bad and everybody else is like, no, it was great. You're like, no, I need to feel bad right now because <laughs> I know I fucked up. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with I fucked up and leave it at that. And exactly. then I'll, I'll, fix it. I'll hear the good stuff later. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the depends on the, of the mistake, no? Sometimes yeah. I, I told in my case, because yes, I say maybe you, I did a very small mistake and I feel so bad because, oh, and I said, no, no, maybe it wasn't first. So sometimes, the mistake you only feel the mistake people doesn't know the mistake because yeah. we need we have experience to cover a lot of mistakes no mm -hmm. so the yeah. spectator will never feel no some of the times and second is because i, I don't want to say it doesn't matter no we, we need to be yeah. as perfect as we as we can no but sometimes in my case years ago just thinking in that mistakes i forgot uh, having fun on the audience yeah. no because you are thinking on that, you are thinking maybe too much on that, no? So now I prefer first having fun on the show, no? I have to, because if yeah. I don't have fun, nothing makes sense, no? mm -hmm. So first I have to have fun. And now when I finish the show, and I, as I told you uh, days later, now is the moment when I improve, I practice, I have a lot of that in that moment, no? But when I finish to practice, doesn't matter. Now I am going to start, I am going to do another show again, and I am going to have fun without feeling bad because whatever reason, eh? because if I feel bad uh, in the show, or after the show, or before the show, uh, I, I don't, I try to do it now because I did uh, years uh, before and I didn't like it. So now I prefer, no, this is a game. We are here because it's the same theory like tamarind no this is a like a kid playing with cars and yeah. with other people no and that's yes. a matter of the method that's a my if i have to put my pinky that's a matter now it's not the moment it's not that moment no mm -hmm. now it's just having fun no yeah, yeah it, it it definitely translated into the audience if you're having fun they're having fun you know it definitely and and what you bring on stage is what is what they'll feel i mean the power of magic i suppose really is you can kind of choose what emotion you want the audience to have by your exactly. by your reaction, exactly, and, and then yeah, like, days after that, now you can 
you have you can improve it, no? But I don't think feeling bad is a good point, no? Sometimes yeah. it's, it's, it's like that and you can feel bad and you cannot do anything, no? But mm. if we can, I mean, imagine in, in the life, no? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I always... <laughs> I, I always like this, yeah. I always like when you have a new routine and it's like Joe when you get a new phone or like a new watch or something and you're so careful with it. But then once you get the first scratch, then you're like, ah, it's fine, start throwing it in your pocket. And so <laughs> I, I think that's similar with like a magic routine. Like you're so careful with everything, but then once it goes wrong once and you recover and nobody notices, then you can just be like Oh, okay. I got this. No matter what <laughs> happens, I can just figure it out. I think it's sometimes it's good for things to go wrong, just so that you know that you can get out of it when it happens. Because we all have twenty different methods of like fixing a routine exactly, if yeah. it doesn't go right. Sure, yeah. Oh, but also if you have a, a phone with a lot of tape, very broke. Yeah. Maybe yeah, you have to change it. Actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, uh, no, a little bit, no? Yeah. If it always goes wrong, try and figure something else. Think a little... <laughs> Learn a new trick. Yeah. 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 I have a psychological card force that works one in 52 times. It's great. Right. <laughs> yeah, change. Use a, a force deck. <laughs> yeah. One way all the way. Do you... You're talking as well about like your creative process and you're looking at your audience and things like that. Is there a anything where you, you find when you're performing maybe in a close up situation where you don't have cameras that you do to try and like gauge your audience's reaction to you try and like uh, focus a lot on people's faces or something like that when you're performing? Yeah, yeah exactly. First, yes, I uh, as I told you, no, first, if I can, is now maybe not i don't do too much no but, but yeah. because i was doing at the beginning or you know, always i do when i have some new stuff no that i want to to test but i prefer with the the camera no the idea of the camera mm -hmm. because it's the moment when i can study after the show no because if i am performing uh, i don't want to pay attention so much in or no pay attention no but i don't want to do the some interpretation in that moment, no, it's like uh, no, I want to be happy now. You, I, yeah. I feel it that you are having fun with me, but I don't want to say, oh, he's having fun because the gag, because maybe another thing, yeah. or because the trick. No, it's, this is after works. No, it's a job yeah. for later. No, so in that moment, mm -hmm. of course, when you are performing, you feel if if the magic is working and you are working or not no you can feel it yeah. you can feel it by the reaction you can feel it by the face and you can feel it by the sound no if you yeah. are in a close up very close up situation no so in that moment you know what works or what doesn't works no but after that this is what the idea of the camera of the video is uh, enter no is because oh no and now i want to study a little more the reaction and and I want to do it, no. But in the moment, no, you don't need to feel the audience every single show, and you, even you don't need to do it never. <laughs> that doesn't matter, no. You yeah. can feel it in that <laughs> moment. But in my case, I did a few times at the beginning. I was and I was doing at the beginning, and and I like it, and I was doing a little more, no. But doesn't matter, no. It's in the same show you can feel it uh, without studying the faces and studying the reaction, no. But but in you in, in a stage situation is. For me, it's a little difficult because sometimes you are working in a, in a theater with 300 people or 1,000. No? Mm -hmm. And maybe 1,000 theater, you feel, oh, they are clapping a lot, so I am so good. But maybe they are clapping maybe the half of the theater <laughs> and sounds yeah. a lot. No? So, so the idea is different. So it depends. No? It depends on the show, it depends on what you want no but in my case i'm i am sure that i want to learn a lot from the audience so i want to listen to them a lot no and yeah. it depends where i am i use different techniques but you can feel it no? you can feel it. as much as you work as easy is no? more easy yeah. is to feel it, no? it it's it's a great tip for everyone listening. You know, it really is. You know, if you want to get better as a performer on on whatever you perform, you know, listen to your audience. Give them what they you know what they want to more than what you want to perform for your own reasons or whatever. Because there's loads of tricks that we perform. I'm sure you know in our repertoire that we really like or magicians like. But lay you know sometimes lay people or an audience it kind of it, it kind of run flat where we might think oh that's a great gimmick or that's a great effect, but it, more something more simple or more classic direct routine would say might do yeah. well with, with an audience 
Ya yeah, esa esa equilibrio, no, equilibrio no. I don't know yeah, how to yeah, say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Equilibrium, yeah, yeah. Ah, really? Oh, cool. I know more English than you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're, 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 you're so, showing Dave's English up big time here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think it's an equilibrium of that, but also an but yes, I want to do my magic. Eh? I don't say just doing just commercial stuff and forget the other no, no, no. In my case, first, first I want to do my magic and what I want, no, what I really like uh, like it, no, because if I don't like it, uh, you can people will maybe will like the trick, but maybe they wanna feel that you are not really having fun again. No. Yeah. So first I want to do my magic, always my magic, I mean the magic that I love, no. But and then I show to my audience and I change, I move and I do things to to get the people I love what I love to, no? And this is the point, no? My target is do what I love, what I love, and try that the spectator love what I love. No? So now in the same moment, we love together the same passion, magic, and my stuff in that moment. No? But as I told you, no, sometimes as a magician, you say, oh, this is a cool gimmick or a cool method, but yeah. audience doesn't matter, then they don't care the method. They, they don't see, or they mm -hmm. shouldn't see it. No? <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. if the method is really cool, but the effect maybe is poor, you don't have anything for the, your audience, no? You yeah. have a cool method to fool magicians, and it's great, and it's cool, but it's for, just for them, to fool magicians, maybe not yes. for a formal show for audience because they don't care the method, no? they don't know anything about method. Yeah. Have you ever had the situation where you watch back a video and there's always that like one spectator who just doesn't like anything and 99% <laughs> of the audience are like standing ovation and they're like sour <laughs> did you ever find that you can see that those sort of people in your videos of like oh they just don't like magic or like you know, do, 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 do you find it hard sometimes to focus on the positive people do you find yourself look always looking at the people who mightn't be enjoying it as much because i think yeah, we all no, have that thing I like I like to learn from both, no? And I love what when happen. I never happen like a one guy's maybe one hour like that, no, no. Because we are uh, people, no? We are person, and we have some yeah. feelings <laughs> in that moment. Maybe if I screw up, I say, "Oh, now I like it." <laughs> yeah. so, I screw up no, more, then he like yeah, my show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I never saw that. But uh, it's, it's funny when I see people that they start. And you already you saw. I am sure, no? When you start the show. And that guy and that guys or whatever they are so serious, no? At the beginning of the show, no? Like, oh, let me see what happened here, no? This is a magician. He tried to fool me, but I am more clever than him, no? And I saw that uh, attitude at the beginning of the show, and it's so fun when the show is is goes, no? Through the show. So maybe after 15 minutes, I saw I, I see the same guy. Uh, more relaxed, no? Like, oh, maybe he's, he's a nice guy and he will just want to play, no? And then after 20 minutes, he just start smiling, no? And at the end of the show, he start, he are clapping and he are having fun, no? And this is the, the target, no? I think yeah. uh, just to try to understand, just to communicate to the your audience that this is not a, a challenge. I am not more clever than you. Nothing, nothing. This is just a game, no? We are now kids playing no we are not kids no but we are adults but we are playing in the same theater that that the impossible now looks like possible no every everybody knows that i don't have powers i don't want to steal your watch uh, no no i my point no my target is share with you that this is what i love so if i love and i am having fun and this is just a game everybody gonna have fun no and so I love when I saw that reactions, no? The spectator yeah. at the beginning of the show, so bad, no? Looking suspicious. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the show, clapping and smiling like a kid, no? And this is that moment when I say, oh, I, I did well, no? Yeah, definitely. Because I, mean, I don't I care to yeah. fool, no? I don't care to fool. Fool like yeah. a, I'm gonna fool you. No, no, I, I want to make you happy for one hour of whatever no and that's it and i want i want to surprise as well no but just mm -hmm. as i told before no emotion surprise impossible and have fun no? 
I always find in Ireland it finds like especially at a wedding or a, an event where you walk up to people at a drinks reception and they're like who's the, they, they're so suspicious of you they think you're going to rob yes. their watch or something and then <laughs> I always find like being like not taking myself seriously instantly yeah. makes them go like oh he can have fun we can have fun and just go like that and then when you hit them with something even I always find something that gets people attention recently I was performing at a girl was at table she was sitting back being like whatever and then i did a rubber dub vanish on the table just a simple rubber dub vanish and she was like what how did you do that it's just like straight into it and she was like do more do more do more and it's like it's Mm -hmm. that sort of thing of like showing that you want to have fun self-deprecate a little bit you don't take yourself too seriously and then just hit them with something that's so strong that they just can't explain and it's and they they open up yeah, sorry, and they will get into the overall overall directly, no? If we will do that, no. In my case, it maybe it's a little easy for because my style is more. It's not funny, but it's fun and it's it's not yeah. serious, no. So in my case, mm-hmm. it's, it's easy to not easy, but it's easier, no. If I am a, a serious mentalist that I want to do something so serious, so it depends on the situation will work better or. Or different, no? I remember when you say the wedding, no? Maybe when people they drink a lot and some people they are difficult, no? Even in the close up in the castle, you know, the magic castle, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's great, no? And I was performing there a few years, but when you do the last show, the super, super late close up show, <laughs> you can see sometimes, you can see sometimes that the, some people they are a little drunk, no? <laughs> and some magicians they don't like it because, no, no, no. And in my case, first, this is what we have. So we have to play with them, no? And second, I under, again, no, I understand, I feel the audience, I listen what they, what I think they want in that moment, and I play with that, no? I say, oh, let me have even more fun. Maybe they will never remember the trick. So it doesn't matter the magic. So I want to make happy <laughs> in that moment. Yeah. So it's, it's depends on the situation, no? It depends on the audience, or it depends. I think... I think Darren Brown does that really well, even with his serious mentalism. Because if you watch any Darren Brown show, the first half is fun yeah. and games. He's just playing mm-hmm. games. They're having fun. And then the second half, everybody's on his side. So yeah, now exactly. we can be serious. Now we can slow it down. And I think that sort of routining is so important that like, if your first trick is 20 minutes and I'm really going to read your mind deep, <laughs> people aren't going to care. You got to like get people to like you first and then you can... Exactly. That is the point, no? People have to like you. And yeah. after that, you can do whatever you want. No? Happens in the life, no? If you like and you love one person, no? if I, if you like me or whatever, I, I, will, I will want to have fun with you. I will want to spend time with you, maybe just sharing a drink and talking, no? Because you, yeah. I like you and you like me, no? So it's the same with your audience, no? If you, if you first, if you love them, and then if they love you, you can, you can do whatever you want, no? Because you will be happy in that moment because you are comfortable, no? Mm-hmm. If, you, if I don't like you, I will say, oh, I, I want to stop this because I, I don't feel good, no? And yeah. This is the first point. And then, of course, we have to do very good magic. No, We have to try, it, at least. No? Definitely. I, I, I think it's, it's so true. I think it, it's definitely, you can see, like, the one Tamara's style in that thinking of the just the fun and just, like, that performance. Because it is that sort of, I think it's very big, it's very Spanish style of performance as well, of, like, that fun, playful energy and stuff. And I think it's, it's something that we, we definitely have, use more we, of in we, marriage. Yeah, without forgetting the uh, trying to do a very strong magic, no? Because yeah. Tamarin does a very strong magic. Uh, Danny da Ortiz, that is uh, a kind of that style, no? But very, very strong magic. So that is the point, no? We don't forget the magic because we are magician, but also we are sh- uh, sharing, we are communicating, no? And this is a, mm-hmm. an art of communication as well. So if the communication fails, uh, the basic uh, land will broke, will break. Yeah, true. No, nobody it, fools uh, me more than one time, Riz. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no one. It's just that. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it is important, though, you know, as a magician, you're not just a magician, you're an entertainer. I mean, they're, they're really paying you to entertain, you know, and then the magic is the vehicle that you use to do it or whatever. But I mean, you're, you're a showman as well. And you, there's, there's so many different layers to being a magician. You can't just 
be a magician like you said like you have to listen to your audience you have to kind of give them what they you know what you think they want or or what way you know what way you're going to present it to them um and for, for them to feel welcome and to enjoy it as well that they don't feel that oh i'm not going to go up with the magician on stage because he's going to make fun of me or whatever there's a there's a there's a very we, we've a lot to kind of like achieve before we can get them on our side Exactly, no, no, perfect. Yeah, this is what happened, no? and, and I don't know there, but I think this is in uh, everywhere, no. But in Spain, it's common when when you are performing and you say that, no, like uh, I will need a volunteer, <laughs> no. Uh, nobody wants, so, or maybe a lot of people doesn't want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, he gonna make fun of me or whatever, no. Uh, but for that reason, I love also the close-up uh, formal shows, no, because in that moment everybody is a volunteer, no, in some point. Or maybe yes. they are not volunteer, everyone, but they feel that they are volunteer because maybe they say a number, another say anything, and, or his partner say anything. So everybody is like a like a family, no, like a small family in that moment. So you can mm -hmm. share different emotions that when you are performing on a stage, no. And I love performing a stage magic. Even maybe I do more stage shows than close up, but when you do close up, you can feel different emotion, no. No, I don't yes. say better. I say different. Different. Yeah, different. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely do. So uh, we're just coming up in 45 minutes here, so I'm going to bring up this, which is the, the good, the bad, and the ugly sign, which is a, okay. this, a segment <laughs> on the show where we like to ask our guests about telling a story about maybe a trick that started off going great, everything was going to plan, but then maybe things that are going downhill <laughs> as you're going, because I think we've all had those situations where a trick maybe didn't go exactly to plan, once and it only happened to us once but do you have any sort of stories that of, of a, a routine where maybe it, it just didn't go exactly the plan yeah but, uh, i am trying to think but i am almost perfect so i i wish no, no, no. I, I have a lot i have a lot because I, as i told you no as much as I, uh, you have mistakes more care less care in that moment no <laughs> you have more uh, more ideas to cover it no but i have i have a few i have a few one of the i told you two because yeah. i tell you two real quick real quick one it was when i was uh, maybe eight years old before to move to to las vegas no i was doing a lot of shows in like a familiar shows but in the in the outside shows i don't know how yeah. to say in english but they are like a stage but outside Okay, yeah. No, in the theater, like outside, no. Yeah, and yeah. I was doing a there a ring inside to a, a box, but at the end entering the in a lemon, no, like a mm -hmm. bill to lemon, but yeah. with a ring, with a ring, okay. no. And I put in a aluminium foil, so nice routine. And I was doing that very cool, no. And you say, oh, disappear a lot of comedy. I I pretend that I am destroying the ring, no. Because, oh, I fail, and I do whatever, and at the end appears on that, no. So one day he said, oh, this is the ring, uh, I give it to you. And when I am doing late the trick, I feel that it's not a metal ring, was a good, you know, good, good mm -hmm. ring. Yes. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. good. yeah. So I say, I think I can do this. I can load this perfectly. I do all the things. And when I am going to load the ring into the lemon, I hear... <laughs> Oh, break <laughs> totally break <laughs> the ring oh. of the spectator was break in was broke Ow. in that moment but now i need to do first five minutes of comedy and then <laughs> <laughs> you better be good fucking comedy at that stage <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i say what happens i say now i have to go and i have to continue and then I try to think something, I don't know, but I have to continue. I don't, I cannot do anything, no? So I continue and the fight comedy was the comedy when I pretend that I break the ring and all this stuff. And in my mind, I say, you know, the ring is really broke. And now I am pretending that I am breaking a fake ring, but the real ring is broke. So what happened? <laughs> and then I finish the ring and I take the lemons. Oh, there is something. There is aluminium foil, but inside there is something. And what is that? I say, is your ring? And the woman said, yes, it's my ring, but it's broke. I say, no, no, it's your, but I know, I say, but it's your ring, right? And they say, yes, but it's broke. Oh, but it's your ring. Thank you so much. <laughs> so in that moment, show the ring, and I, I move 
And that's why I say, but don't worry, because at the end of the show, I promise that in your own hands, the rings will will restore again. Uh, so I finished, for, but just to feel the audience, just to feel to the rest of the audience, that was a control situation. And when I put the mic down, no, and say, come to, after the show, because we're going to talk, I'm sorry for that. Uh, and then he, we finished the show. I forgot the rain idea. I finished with confetti. Pa, pa, pa. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, I say, sorry, I, how, how much was the rain? It was a mistake. The uh, ring was broken. I say, no, no, don't worry. It was just a $3 ring. And I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was, it was funny. But in that moment, it was in my face, no? Because first yeah. I load and then I reveal, reveal five minutes. So imagine that five minutes. Well, <laughs> yeah. like hours. <laughs> Sweat everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Just armpits are just <laughs> completely destroyed. Yeah, yeah. So it was so, so bad. So <laughs> that's, that's awful. But, yeah, yeah. Whatever. And the other, well, we have to tell another thing, no? What yeah. the thing that they have to tell. Sure. That, that one had it all, though. That had good, yeah. bad, and ugly. That, that, was, that uh... was bad or was good. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out good, yeah. <laughs> so, so now I, I don't know, but I happened a lot of this. I think this is the most thing that I that I remember now. And I told you that I wanted to tell two stories, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also I told you that I have a very bad memory because I forget <laughs> the, the other one. <laughs> <laughs> No, I yeah. haven't. The mnemonic is gonna be too tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, was too long. Was too long with my English. <laughs> <laughs> no, what happened? The same. A lot of things. No, I'm doing competitions and, and doing. Uh, when I do my opener, I don't know if you remember the opener. Yeah. The opener is a trick that I use a, a gag. When you say, "Tell me a number between one and five and do the the gag with the fingers. Yeah. But mm-hmm. then I produce a card and I say, "Name a card," and in that moment is the the, the name of card, no? That this is always my opener and I use in, in 4Fs and other things in competition because it's a fuller and in some moment in, in a different competition when I say, uh, say, oh, almost, just for one, oh, but now is my moment. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, this happened to everyone, no? And, yeah, yeah, and, but, of course. Yeah, it's the same and we have cover and the same, if your attitude is is good and is well, uh, no? Uh, because René Laban, do you know René Laban? The Argentinian magician just with oh, one yes. hand, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. René Laban, no? yeah. He said that, no? That audience can, uh, I don't know how, can, I don't know how to say in English, but they say, if you make a mistake, doesn't matter, people will understand that, but people mm-hmm. will never understand if, if you get bored, bored then. No, yeah. the, yes. No, yeah, how to yeah. translate it? I say if you the translation is that no, if you are a nice guy but you make a mistake, people doesn't care, but they don't they care if you are boring, no? Definitely. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah that's you're better off just to continue. I mean, as as a performer and as a professional, you just have to keep on going. Like you said, like you knew the ring was broken, but you had to keep going for that five minutes of patter yeah. that you had to say, you know, because it, 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 you were still performing to everyone, you know, and it's the same. We, we've all had a little kind of, uh, you know, but sometimes like a, a small tweak in a routine that it might go, it mightn't be going wrong, but it mightn't be going the way you planned or something. It just becomes a new effect. And then that, com- that could become a new trick or it could be an idea. I'd be like, you question why did it happen? And then the reason it happened, maybe I can put that in now for, you know, on purpose this time, and because I got a laugh or whatever. So, so no, you know, no, in, case, no, no in my case, <laughs> well, not, ring, don't, ring, I don't break time. rings all the time. Yeah, oh, yeah not every, every night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, no. In my case, I finished. I was the last time that I was doing that trick. <laughs> I said it. <laughs> I, 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 I dropped the ring before under a table and had to crawl under the table to get it back. And was just like, <laughs> no, I'm not doing. I didn't do the trick for two years. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but in that moment, no, it's sometimes when in that moment, in that case, no, is is almost impossible to to fix yeah. that, no, it's almost impossible. But in a lot of mistakes, uh, the spectator feel it because because your face, no, yeah. no, mm-hmm. no, because the mistake, no, it's just because your face. But if you another cool, very quick, the the theory of Tamarit again, sorry, mm-hmm. he has a theory like a three mistakes per show. 
So yeah. that means in his mind, he wants, it's just a crazy theory, but just talking about the attitude, no? So he mm -hmm. say, in every show, I need to have three mistakes, okay? In every single show. It's like a goal, no? Mm -hmm. So in every single show, I have to get three mistakes. So it's just a mental attitude, no? But because when you are performing and you say, if you screw up something, no? If you don't know that, they say, oh, my gosh. And maybe you want to, to cover, no? But you're gonna, they're going to feel it. But mm -hmm. with that attitude, they say, you screw up, and you say, good, I have one, no? <laughs> so I need three, I need three, so I have one, cool. So now it's like a very crazy idea, but it's just a mental attitude, no? If you think that you need three mistakes per show, when you have one, say, cool, I have one. I, I, I want two more. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know if I, I understand. It's, yeah, like, it's not good. like a, yeah, yeah, I, want, no. I, I want to have three mistakes, no? Yeah. Of course, we don't want any mistakes, no? But it's just the attitude, no? If I have one, say, first, I have one, and now my face is still cool. Yeah, you fine. react. You react well. <laughs> you don't, exactly. don't, whatever you do, don't have a perfect show. Get to your last trick and go. I need three mistakes. Gotta really <laughs> fuck this one up. <laughs> but everything went perfectly. So now I'm gonna lose their card. I'm gonna break the ring. I'm just gonna go crazy in the last. Exactly. Time. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my career. I will stop doing magic. <laughs> no, but it's the, the thing, no? Like uh, it's your attitude, no? Because a lot of tricks has a mistake, uh, uh, a fake mistake, no? Not yes. Mistake, you know, but a Magician. fake mistake. Yeah, ma magician in trouble type of thing. Yeah, yes. exactly. You know, and, and and you you are sure and you are safe. You know, you are doing good because you know that it's a fake mistake, no? And people yeah. feel it. But if you have a real mistake and your acting is the same, people will yeah. feel the same. They don't know if this is a magician trouble or it's a really really mistake, no? So it's depend yeah. on the attitude, no? And depend yeah. on the mistake. If the mistake is the ring is broke, uh. <laughs> but, so so yeah. what we're saying really is there are no mistakes. <laughs> it's all yeah, magic. Exactly. There is no mistakes. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I, I, I think that's very good advice. That like, and I think it's, great advice. The more mistakes you make, the more comfortable you are, kind of <laughs> reacting to them. Do you know, you mm. can kind of uh, like I've I've been on stage and had things that you'd never even think of happen, where like I was doing touching on hoy. And somebody had to think of a question from the future. And if you know Touching on Hoy, the person thinking about the question from the future is very important to the trick. He said he couldn't think of a question for the future, and I had to send him back to the audience. It's so funny. you're just uh, what am I meant to do now? But yeah. you just improvise and carry on, and yeah. no, nobody and also, notices. Also, you are practicing or creating a routine or whatever. I make it always I try to think how many things can fail, no? How, mm -hmm. how many mistakes have happened, no? Say, oh, what happened if I break, if this is break during the performance? What happened if they say another number? Or what happened if they say, whatever, no? So in, during my rehearsals, I mm -hmm. think a lot of uh, possible mistakes and I think a cover for that, no? So if that mistake happened in real life, or I already have a cover because I already imagine that moment, no? Yeah. I, I remember I remember Larry Berker, I think I remember reading before the mentalist and he was saying that um that if someone came up and their spectacles broke um and uh, they were like oh no broken I, I didn't bring them with me or whatever so he started bringing a magnifying glass with him for them to be able to read the the paper or the book or whatever for a book test and it, it like that almost looks like a magic trick that you knew that you needed to have a magnifying glass there or you needed you know you you've thought it out so well that you know that there's going, there could be problems. It's almost like uh, you, you preempt it and it almost makes it look like, oh, he knows everything. He's he's such a professional, you know? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and also, uh, the routine, as much possible mistakes can do more risks, no? So yes, first, yeah. I, I try to make the routines that uh, with a less risks, no? Less risks. Yeah. But the risks that I can have, no? Different mistakes. Always I try to have a, a cover, no? Sometimes yes. it not depends on you, it depends on the spectator, maybe. But we need to cover that too. Definitely. So, so you're in Spain now. Are you heading back to Vegas for shows, or what? What's that? What's that? I am in Spain now. I am in Spain now. Maybe now I am in the two weeks uh, that maybe I'm gonna change. Uh, 
because I am between two projects now. Mm -hmm. So maybe in two weeks I'm gonna new my future. <laughs> <laughs> so so now I am in Spain and I don't know if I'm gonna be in, in another place in the in this summer and maybe move again for a, a couple of years. But but now I'm in Spain. So now Excellent. I am here. I'm happy I'm with my family. I'm working here, so very very easy. <laughs> But because you can feel it with my accent. You can feel that I didn't do English shows for a long time. <laughs> it's, uh, you, you definitely have brilliant English, so you, 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 you no, can no, put no, down no. that you're fluent. <laughs> but it's, it's the same. It's, I know it, my English is so bad, but my attitude is, <laughs> is good. It's the same with the magic. <laughs> no, it was, it was great. It's great to have you on. Your English is great. My Irish is so bad because I can say about two things in Irish and that's it. That's all I have. <laughs> that's being bad at languages. But yeah, we just want to say thanks so much, Adrian, for coming on. We really appreciate it. And it's been absolutely amazing hearing all your stories and all the advice that you've given to people. It's, it's been absolutely amazing. Where can people find you online if they want to reach out? Sure. And I, I don't use a lot the social media because I, I don't, I am not old, but I feel so old and I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. I don't use it so much, but I have, I have Instagram so they can find yeah. me on Instagram or even in my webpage or in my email address, no, that you can, if you say you, Adrian Vega Magician, they can find me in different places. So it's so easy. No? If you want, it's so easy to find me. And I will be more than happy to, to keep sharing our passion with uh, different magicians around the world. And I am so happy with, to, to be here again. So thank you, you guys, for inviting me here. It was my pleasure to be with you. Really, really my pleasure. And, and yeah, I hope to meet you in person because this is Definitely. what magic, no? This is what we need, no? More Definitely, man. 100%. Online, yeah. and just sharing. <laughs> and and you're... you're... You're a credit to the to one time res in the school to, to you know to, to give that passion and love for, for magic. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, David. And yeah. thank you guys for listening to this yeah. interview. My pleasure. And, and definitely look up all of uh, all of the products that we talked about. The arrested, the deck stab tree, I think is out on Penguin as well. I've seen them up there. So definitely go check out all that sort of stuff. And if you've been watching, make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube or if you're on Spotify, iTunes, hit the follow button. We've got loads of interviews coming up. And we'll definitely have to have Adrian back on again because I think we've only scratched the surface, but uh, we'll have to have lots more chats. And again, thank, thank you so much. And thanks to everybody. And we'll be back again next week with another episode. And keep an eye out. We've started doing product reviews as well. So the first product review has been up on the channel. And thanks to everybody who's interacted with that. So that's been great. And also just want to say from us at Steve Reality as well, uh, rest in peace to the amazing Jonathan who um, passed away. So uh, today when we were yeah, recording legend. this. So absolute, absolute legend and magic. So we just want to mm -hmm. send out our condolences to his friends and family for that okay. as well. Yeah, so I, I, I was a pleasure to meet him when I was living in Vegas because he was very good friend of Chris Angel. So I was working mm -hmm. with, with them for years and he he was a super nice guy and, so, of course, a legend, as you say. No, Everybody knows that. But if yes. the people that they doesn't know personally, uh, of course, they, he was super nice from the first meet. So a very That's sad true. news. Def yes, definitely. very sad news. Rest in peace. Yeah, definitely. And uh, thanks again to everybody tuning in and we'll see you all again next week. See you. Bye. See you.